come back to our bitch chest YouTube channel and today's tutorial we're going to learn how to make this beautiful short flare plant with pleats you can see that we have two pleats at the front here i'm going to be taking us throughout to cut and sew this if this is something you like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you there are several ways you can draft this you can use the flare method i think i have a tutorial on that on the channel already and then you can just use your basic trouser block to draft your short flare which is what we're going to be doing here so here i already have my measurement this is going to be my starting point which is my waistline this is my crotch line and this is going to be the full length of the pant the length can be as long as you want so here on the waistline you can see that i have one inch allowance here okay that's for shipping my my side so if you watch my tutorial on plants i'm sure this will be easy for you so the waist i'm working with is 28 inches divided by four is seven so i'm going to add one inch for that it's actually not necessary because the flare points but i'm adding it and then i'm going to add one inch for seam allowance so all together here i have nine inches so this nine inches now i'm going to come to my crotch line now and mark it as well and then i'm going to mark i'm going to make this into a straight line I'm going to assist me in drawing my crotch curve so on this crotch line now you're going to mark the fullest part of your thigh you're going to measure the fullest part for me that's 26 inches so i'll divide 26 inches by two and that's going to give me 13. so this 13 remember when i was taking the waist measurement it was from here so this 13 inches i'm going to take it from outside outside which is here so here i'm going to mark 13 inches and it stops here so i'll just extend this line that i have to that point so here i'll mark the difference that i have from here to here for me that's three inches so i'll simply divide that into four that's 0.75 this is just to guide you for your crotch and then i'm going to mark it diagonally here sorry about the marker so after doing that now this is the point the next thing is for you to connect like this to blend in your crotch curve so please use a very good curve to do this so i'm just making do with this curve that i have and making sure that my points connect with each other and then i'll just try to blend everything in okay just to have a nice crotch curve so now for my waistline to shape my waist remember i took the waist measurements from here so i'll just take this curve side of my ruler and then connect everything together like this so that the shape can come out although for this particular tutorial we don't need the shape because it's going to still be a big pant at the end of the day but if you are drafting a regular pant you will need to do all of this so for the that i'm going to measure my bust point measurements from here and then i'm going to mark five inches for my dart leg and then you're going to take your dart at that point so here remember i added one inch for that so i just mark half an inch on both sides and then i'm going to connect for the dart okay so here for the pant so for the hem of the pants you can just take it down because we are still going to slash and spread but if you are working with a of an actual trouser block all you just need to do is to measure around the hem if you want it loosely you measure it loosely so for me here i, I want around 22 inches so if i divide 22 inches by two that's going to give me 11 inches so this 11 inches i want to centralize it so to do that i'm going to mark what i have there which is 13 inches and then i'm going to try to locate the midpoint of that so midpoint of 13 is six and a half so i'll mark that on these two sides and then i'll make it into a straight line so after marking it like this the next thing is to the 11 inches that's going to be my hem i'll just divide it into two and then i'm going to share it between the two sides so i'll mark five and a half inches here and then i'll mark the rest here which is going to be the 11 inches then with your ruler you're going to connect to your crotch as well as your side so it is that simple so now this is my front i'm going to cut it out now and then use it to cut the back 
so i've cut out the front i'm just going to place it on another pattern so that i can use it to cut the back okay so after placing it i'm going to use something to hold it down i'm using a masking tape in this case and then i'll just add few allowances to the back because of the bum at the back although we're still going to add volume to this so i'm not sure this is necessary but i'm going to add it okay so the measurement this side is going to remain exactly the same the only places i'm going to be adding to is the center front area so here for the crotch i'm going to extend it like that and then here at this center angle i'm going to come up by 1.5 inches from where this from where the, you can see the crush from this crush area i'm coming up by 1.5 inches here i'm going to extend this by two two and a half or three inches depending on how big the person is and then on the upper part here i'm going to come up by one inch for the bum rest for the front for the front for the back and for the front i'm going to come down by 1.7 open 75 okay so all together now you can see it's around two inches that we came up by so here on the waistline remember the side has to be the same so i'm going to connect this to the side of the front and then for the front as well remember we came down by 0.75 so i'm going to reconcile that as well so those are the changes that i'm going to be making i just need to connect everything together so in this case now if you want to place your zipper at the back you can add your allowance for placing your zipper okay so you can add like one inch over there for the zipper and then you connect everything together okay so like i said you just get a very good cuff that will do this for you So connect like this and then you run everything together so here on the pants as well i'm just going to add an allowance of one inch to that or two inches if you want and then i'll connect just like this and then connect together so this is the pattern that i'm working with for the back so i'll just cut it out now and then we do our slash and spread okay so this is the first block and this is the back block so to form a flare pants all you just need to do i'm going to extend this dart line that i have here i'm going to extend this downwards for both the front and back and then that line i'm just going to go ahead and slash it on that point i'm going to slash it open and then spread as much as i want on a fresh paper so i'll use this front to show us what i'm doing then i'll be doing the exact same thing to the back as well so for this that like i said it's not actually necessary so you can just close it But for this it's not really necessary so you can see i'm just going to go ahead and i'm just going to close the that because remember we had the allowance and if you don't close it it's going to increase the waist measurement that you work with so i just said to add it like that so that if you are drafting a regular pant that needs that you know how to add your that to it so I'm going to close this with my masking tape and then cut through it so that I can spread this as much as I want. Okay, I hope you understand that. So now I'm going to cut to the tip, but not completely. So now that I have cut, I'm going to spread this like this. So how you spread this now is totally up to you and how big you want the pants to be. So this is a fresh pant. And I'm just going to spread this by around 8 to 10 inches. 
like i said it depends on how big you want it to be and for this pant it's still going to have a pleat so i think nine inches is fine for me so once you spread to your satisfaction i'm going to go ahead and hold the pattern down so this same thing that i'm doing to this pattern is what i'm going to do to the back as well okay so um holding the pattern down so after holding it down i'm going to mark this part so you can just place your curl jeweler and then use that to connect them together like this but you just mark your 16 inches remember 16 inches is the starting measurement that i worked with okay so from that starting point you can just mark the 16 inches all around so that you can close the gap that you have there so again with my curve, I'm just going to try to connect everything together. So this is what the pattern looks like now. I'm going to cut it out and do the same thing for the back as well. So I've cut it out and this is what the patterns look like. This is the front and this is the back. So I just did the same thing. I closed the dust for the back as well. The reason we are closing the dust is because if you're not taking the dust and we already added the allowance it's going to add to your waist measurements because remember my actual waist measurement is seven inches and then i added one inch allowance for seam and one inch for that so i had to close the dust allowance if not i would have had nine inches here which is not the true waist measurement so this is the front and this is the back so if you want just a short a flare pant this is okay for you you go ahead and cut on your fabric but in this case we want to add pleats to it so for the purpose of this tutorial i'm adding pleats to just the front i'm not going to add pleats to the back so to add this place locate where you want to place the pleat which is on my dart line in my case so what i'm going to do now is to just draw a straight line on that dart line area okay can see so after drawing this straight line i'm going to take my scissors and cut the line open so this is like separating the pattern so after cutting it open like this i'm going to take a new paper and then i'm going to determine how much pleats that i want this to have okay we want it to have like four inches pleats it means by the time you pleat it, it's going to be around two inches. So depending on what you want, I think I'm going to do four to five inches. So what I'm going to do is to just place one hand of this on this, and then I'm going to hold it with a tape. After placing it and holding it, you can see I've gone ahead to mark the pleat space that I want. I marked out four inches. And then the other side here i'm going to place it on the other hand make sure that you have your balance line i just noted it it has to match as much as possible so that you're not going to run into any issues by the time you want to sew so this other side also i'm going to hold with my masking tape so this allowance that we have in between is going to feel for the pleats okay so just like we did earlier for the slash and spread i'm going to connect the space that i have in between them together so that i can cut and then we're going to cut on our fabric so if you want to add pleats to if you want to add pleats to the back as well this is what you're going to do you can add as many pleats as you want and then you can add it at whatever point remember i'm just adding mine on the dart area so you can have up to four pleats in front you can have just two pleats like what i'm doing here it's totally up to you and what you want so what i'm doing now is cutting off the excess that i have so here i'm going to cut off the excess as well so if you cut it if you 
if you cut it on your fabric you need to notch these two points that your pleats have because that is where you are going to take the pleats just like this so once you take the pleats you can see that we have our normal our original waistline back and then you're just going to have like a pleat just like this on both sides so this is for my front and this is for the back like i said i'm not adding place to my back so if you want to add place to your back as well you just cut it open here and then add your allowance for your pleat so i'll cut this on my fabric now so i'll cut it on my fabric and then i just cut exactly what i have on my pattern so you cut two for each two for the front and two for the back so this is the back and this is the front and for the front as well i know where my pleat is going to be very important for you to remember that so that when you remove your pattern you're not going to get confused and of course you're going to notch you're going to cut two for that as well so like i said for the pleat all you just need to do is to fold them over each other like this so you need to decide where you want the pleats to follow this can be towards the the center like this or you can pleat it towards the side so it's totally up to you and the design you want to go for so to sew this now just like we join our normal trouser you first sew your crotch okay for the front and back remember the back that's where i'm going to be fixing my zipper in this case so i'll go ahead and join the crotch okay so after joining the crotch i'm going to join the front and back together and then i'll fix the band so i have held my pleat and sewn the crotch so you can see my pleat is facing the center area okay so you can face both sides and you can also make it an inverted pleat and make them face each other so this is the front and this is the back so what i'm going to do next now is to match the crotch for the front and back together and then i'm going to sew then after sewing the crotch i'm going to go ahead and sew the side seam okay it's as simple as that and i'll open this zipper allowance that i have at the back and fix my zipper and the band so i'll go ahead and do all of this so i forgot to mention that i did not have any allowance on my crotch area because for this on my tie measurements i did not have allowance on my tie because of course this pattern that i worked with the only part that is going to be fitted is the waistline okay you can see how the crotch increase so the allowance is actually not needed that was why i did not hide it if you are working with a fitted pants please add all the necessary allowance you can check my tutorial on how to draft a pant so that you learn more about that so i'll go ahead and join the crotch area now and the side together okay so this is what it looks like you can see our feet there and you can see the fullness that we have here so you can spread it as much as you want depending on how full you want it to be and also you can fit your zipper in front or at the back i don't want my zipper to be at the front that was why i placed it at the back i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with you if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye